What is a weapon? In the dictionary there are many definitions, but we all know that the weapon is the tool used to harm. Either defend yourself, or hunt with it, or as a deliberate attack. The weapons were a great help for the survival of the human species, because they were used for hunting, so, the primitive man's living was easier. Unfortunately, the humans started to use these objects, weapons, not as an utility necessary to survive, but as some objects through which they could express their hatred and selfishness, behaviors created by the environment. Humanized weapons are those objects whose utility is different or not exist, but which may become, or have become, weapons. We're talking about knives, blades, be, absolutely anything that can be used as a weapon, and because of that, those objects, are called humanized, because only the human can animate them, and transform, into weapons. Those weapons are not a system failure if the system it's based on intelligence and focused on human being education, which is not the case in the current system. Weapons. Those objects, machinery, specifically designed to hurt. They focused mainly on hurting human beings, and too little on hunting, and the hunting it's for pleasure, a hobby, and entertainment. And for the hunting they are not necessary in an intelligent system, because the need of hunting is long gone. Those are used strictly to hurt other human beings. Guns, swords, bombs, launchers, fighter planes, tanks, cannons and other sophisticated weapons, are focused on the attack inside species. People in charge of weapons business have invented a new term, self-defense weapons, but they forgot that, for the self-defense weapons to exist, they need the other ones, pure weapons. In fact, they are all weapons, it only matters the intention of using them. Instead of eliminating those weapons, they invented others for self-defense. People had the nerve to create so-called national arms Weapons of mass destruction. Those are weapons designed for countries, for the potential conflicts between them. And they continue to invest huge sums, even the largest, in the development of these objects, machines. How can you create such weapons when we share the same planet? Today, America has 300 submarines. Each one, not according to me, according to the war fund, has more destructive power than all the wars in history. One submarine. Now where can you go with that? What can you accomplish? But there's a place for particular senators and government officials that goes a place under a mountain for them to go to in case of nuclear war. Well, there's six months supply of food, Order all the necessities of life. What do you come out to? You ever think of that? A burnt out, radioactive, wasted area? How stupid can you be? All laws come into existence because of scarcity. When there's scarcity of water, people will steal it, remove it, if not for themselves, for their children. So, uh, all the laws in the world, but if you don't want people to steal water, you build an electric fence around the water. See, and that's the way you say, you don't need to put up a sign, don't steal water, but those people will die. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to build a fence around our country, and say, this is the greatest country in the world, we're going to keep it that way. We depend on other countries. If we live to ourselves, I can assure you, we'll die of ourselves. Because if the Russians do nuclear testing and they dump radioactive stuff into the sea or the Japanese, the world is one big place and the air moves around and the waters move. Therefore living to yourself, your little isolated colony, your little uh, culture that you want to build, your 
your little city that you want to build of people with like-mindedness. All of that has no basis for survival. Now, as a normal person, you wonder what's in their mind and where this will lead. It's easy to solve the mystery of weapons perpetuation. We live in a monetary system that relies on consumption to function and on profit to evolve. How the weapon business is the most profitable business, it's normal for this industry to prosper, even if not only represents a disgrace to the human species, but also a danger, the greatest. An intelligent system would take back any weapon, and would invent some strictly to protect the human race in case of alien invasion, although, if such war would occur, we would have no chance, thinking that the attacking alien species should have a much more advanced technology, since they've succeed to visit our planet. It was just an idea to keep the weapon concept. When man is educated and has access to abundance, food, comfort, technology, without the need for obedience, which is possible, then he would not need weapons, and the humanized weapons would not have reasons to be animated by some intelligent beings, without reason to attack. Instead of producing these weapons, that have filled the planet by their number, and all the damage that have done, it would be better to produce technology, machines, that can save man from any work, from the desire to steal, to commit murders. Instead of creating weapons of mass destruction, you can create weapons of mass creation. Wars represents the playing with the guns. Ask yourself, when two or more countries are at war, who took this decision to kill each other? You, have you voted for that? And, after all, the countries are some imaginary delimitations. If I am in one of these countries, and I am in danger, who's to blame? Who decided to declare war to a country? Does they understand what a country is? Who are those individuals that take action on behalf of all? And more importantly, what? Are they solving through this brutal act? There have been many wars over time, which were the effects besides suffering and dead people. Ask yourself which is the war's purpose and why you don't have anything to say about that. War is a word which was invented when one territorial group of people took away other people's land. They used force and violence, and war was the media for doing that. You shot other people, stole their women and their resources for your own gain. And nations have been at war ever since man invented weapons. And as long as you invent weapons, uh, you can have war. And war is the means of protecting everything you've stolen from others. No nation starts out very big. They start out smaller and take land away from other people. And they don't take it by invitation. They weren't in, invited to take over the land. They took it by killing, force, and violence. And war is the most inappropriate way of solving the differences. That's why I'm against the Pentagon and the military, because they majorly should be concerned with how to bridge the difference and bring nations together toward a common purpose, namely taking care of the environment, one another, and restoring the damaged environment. That's what I'd like to see in military systems. I would like to see, instead of training millions of soldiers to be killing machines, I'd rather train them in being problem solvers send them back to school, teach them social science, social psychology, sociology, so they can add to the culture, not be destructive. Wars represents the ultimate failure of human beings, which, either they cannot deal with the problems, 
or they don't want to do that. And I tried hard to be proud of my service, but all I could feel was shame. And racism could no longer mask the reality of the occupation. These were people, these were human beings. I've since been plagued by guilt anytime I see an elderly man, like the one who couldn't walk, who he rolled onto a stretcher and told the Iraqi police to take him away. I feel guilt anytime I see a mother with her children, like the one who cried hysterically and screamed that we are worse than Saddam as we forced her from her home. I feel guilt anytime I see a young girl, like the one I grabbed by the arm and dragged into the street. We were told we were fighting terrorists. The real terrorist was me, and the real terrorism is this occupation. Racism within the military has long been an important tool to justify the destruction and occupation of another country. It has long been used to justify the killing, subjugation, and torture of another people. Racism is a vital weapon employed by this government. It is more important weapon than a rifle, a tank, a bomber, or a battleship. It is more destructive than an artillery shell, or a bunker buster, or a tomahawk missile. While those weapons are created and owned by this government, they are harmless without people willing to use them. Those who send us to war do not have to pull a trigger or lob a mortar round. They do not have to fight the war, they merely have to sell the war. They need a public who is willing to send their soldiers into harm's way. They need soldiers who are willing to kill and be killed without question. They can spend millions on a single bomb, but that bomb only becomes a weapon when the ranks in the military are willing to follow orders to use it. They can send every last soldier anywhere on earth, but there will only be a war if soldiers are willing to fight. And the ruling class, the billionaires who profit from human suffering, care only about expanding their wealth, controlling the world economy, understand that their power lies only in their ability to convince us that war, oppression, and exploitation is in our interest. They understand that their wealth is dependent on their ability to convince the working class to die to control the market of another country. And convincing us to kill and die is based on their ability to make us think that we are somehow superior. Soldiers, sailors, marines, airmen have nothing to gain from this occupation. The vast majority of people living in the U.S. have nothing to gain from this occupation. In fact, not only do we have nothing to gain, but we suffer more because of it. We lose limbs, endure trauma, and give our lives. Our families have to watch flag-draped coffins lowered into the earth. Millions in this country without health care, jobs, or access to education must watch this government squander over $450 million a day on this occupation. Poor and working people in this country are sent to kill poor and working people in another country to make the rich richer. And without racism, soldiers would realize that they have more in common with the Iraqi people than they do with the billionaires who send us to war. I threw families onto the street in Iraq only to come home and find families thrown onto the street in this country in this tra tragic and unnecessary foreclosure crisis. We need to wake up and realize that our real enemies are not in some distant land. They're not people whose names we don't know and cultures we don't understand. The enemy is people we know very well and people we can identify. The enemy is a system that wages war when it's profitable. The enemy is the CEOs who lay us off from our jobs when it's profitable. It's the insurance companies who deny us health care when it's profitable. It's the banks who take away our homes when it's profitable. Our enemy is not 5,000 miles away. They are right here at home. If we organize and fight with our sisters and brothers, we can stop this war, we can stop this government, and we can create a better world. Police. They are the ones that keep the society under control. These human beings are following some laws and they make you follow those laws too, without giving any explanation, or asking themselves why they are doing this. Because. 1. The cops are directly in touch with the monetary system citizens. 